Hi everyone, welcome back. We will be continuing with the classification of Kingdom Protista, where we will be discussing on the rest of the phyla under Kingdom Protista. Here we will be discussing on phylum Parabasilia. Phylum Parabasilia, the name itself had come because of the presence of parabasal uh, apparatus. Okay. They include uh, anaerobic flagellate protus and they are characterized by the presence of parabasal fibers that link their basal bodies to Golgi complexes. Basal bodies are the structures, are the intracellular structures from which is associated with the uh, cilia or flagella. Okay, here they are flagellate, so they are, uh, like flagellum arises from them. So these basal bodies are connected with Golgi complexes through para, parabasal fibers. Okay, that is a unique about parabasalia. Uh, and uh, the whole apparatus is referred as parabasal fibers. Usually, there may be uh, more than one uh, flagella. Usually, these uh, flagella, they are uh, arranged anteriorly in groups, okay, one or more groups. Okay. And the uh, axostyle, it is present along longitudinal axis of the body. Uh, mitochondria may be lacking and uh, the reduced mitochondria, that is hydrogenosomes, are present here. And interstatory apparatus is absent. Uh, one or more nuclei may be present. The phase uh, is referred, the phenomenon is referred as cryptopleuromitosis. Okay, it is crypto, right, cryptopleuromitosis. And uh, due to this, one, uh, usually more than one nuclei may be present. The typical example is that of trichonympha and trichomonas. And we'll be looking in detail on trichonympha. Trichonympha, what is so peculiar about trichonympha? Trichonympha is an anaerobic uh, flagellate or it, uh, trichonympha, the genus, includes a, uh, a group of anaerobic flagellates that are found exclusively in the hind guts of uh, termites and the wood feeding cockroaches, the cryptoceras. So what is so specific about these termites as well as the wood feeding cockroaches, they feed on cellulosic matter, it's plant matter, isn't it? But unfortunately, these uh, insects, they cannot uh, produce cellulose digesting enzymes in their gut and they have to depend upon these protozoans, the trichonympha for digesting these um, uh, cellulose. Okay, so it is a symbiotic association, symbiotic association of trichonympha, the protozoa which resides inside the gut of termite. The trichonympha, it, they uh, uh, digest the cellulose of the food taken by termites and cockroaches, feeding cockroaches and the uh, digestion of these cellulose, it will uh, release the nutrients which can be taken up by the, uh, these insects. Okay, so that kind of a symbiotic relationship can be found between the trichonympha. So it is an endosymbiont anaerobic flagellate coming under parabasalia. So it is a parabasal. Now a large number of flagella uh, it is found in groups over the entire surface of the cell. You can see here, right? So, uh, this is a blepharoplast and this very typical uh, uh, structure, okay. And uh, you can see the uh, ingested uh, wood particles inside and it is having a like oval shape with a rostrum on the anterior part, a rostral cap is present and all throughout the body you can find the flagella, right. Uh, and uh, these is put to provide with parabasal body and that is why it has given, got the name parabasalia, the group has given, got the name parabasalia. Okay, and this is a microscopic photograph of the uh, trichonympha and here you can see the nucleus very typical and uh, the, the, uh, here you can see the flagella, okay, the uh, what do you call, uh, nucleus and the parabasal bodies you can see over here, okay, and these are actually the uh, wood ingested, wood particles ingested by them, the rostral region. So, this is about the trichonympha, uh, it is endosymbion that is so specific about the trichonympha. The next phylum which we are going to learn is uh, phylum Ciliophora. Uh, we have already discussed one example of Ciliophora in extensive detail and that, is, that was Paramecium. Okay. Ciliophora as the name indicates the locomotory structure of cilia. So cilio, Ciliophora it is a large group of cilia bearing protists. Uh, usually two or more nucleus, nuclei may be present and body is covered with pellicle and cilia is meant for locomotion, food collection, ingestation, etc. A very unique intraciliary apparatus can be found. We have already seen that pellicle and alveoli, then the what you call it, trichosis and uh, all those structures, it forms the intraciliary apparatus and hence uh, it is uh, present in ciliophora which was not uh, present in the previous few phyla which we have discussed. Uh, apart from cilia, the um, 
pellicle is also associated with uh, trichosis, which is used for attention, anchorage, and defense, which we have already seen the structure uh, in detail uh, with respect to the paramecium. Okay. Then um, uh, the nuclear apparatus, uh, it is heterokaryotic dimorphic nuclear apparatus. More than one nuclear present and these are dimorphic, that is differently sized. It could, uh, uh, few are larger, few are smaller, so that is dimorphic. Okay, that is why in the case of paramecium, we have seen it is macronucleus and micronucleus. They were dimorphic, differently sized, two different uh, sized uh, nuclear, uh, nuclei may be present. Nutrition is holozoic, it's very few saprotrophic ones are also found okay uh, examples are paramecium vorticella balanterium paramecium we have already seen and vorticella will be looking at here uh, vorticella it is found in freshwater ponds rivers lakes streams uh, it is it is an, uh, among the aquatic vegetation you can find and vorticella it is so, uh, solitary uh, and several of them may be found together even though and usually they are found in sedentary form that is it is in fixed form so you can see here uh, the stalk uh, it is only partially uh, uh, like uh, depicted here it's very long and usually this stalk is used to get uh, attached to some substratum maybe like uh, like um, different substratum under water an aquatic uh, ecosystem it could be a rock it could be a decomposing woody matter so in those kinds of things it can be found attached to okay so this may be at, uh, uh, commonly found attached by a long highly contractile stock this these this stock are uh, is uh, highly contractile and it may be attached to by these stock onto some submerged objects like weeds, stones, or animals, etc. And they are usually found in large groups, even though they are not colonial, solitary, but they may be found in large groups. And all the individuals in the group remain free and independent of each other. And they are found in uh, abundance in stagnant water, rich in decaying organic matter, and feeds largely on bacteria. And you can even find it in uh, like uh, natural ponds around uh, here. If you collect water from the uh, ponds, stagnant waters, which are uh, especially from the part which is rich in decaying organic matter, and if you put it in under microscope, you will be able to see the vorticella in plenty. Okay, since it is uh, what you call um, uh, sedentary, uh, it uh, just uh, this stalk it moves and uh, moves in the sense that the stalk is uh, contractile and it can reduce and increase the length of the uh, stalk and also the the cilia that also it can be seen found moving okay uh, so what happens is if we, if we can very clearly see the movement how it ingests the food how the cilia moves to uh, make us water circulating into the mouth and how it gets inside all these things we can uh, very easily see uh, observe it in the microscope now when you see the structure of a what you call vorticella it is a microscopic stalked form with, with an inverted bell shaped asymmetrical body and due to this bell shaped uh, body it is also known as bell animal cule because inverted bell shaped structure and hence vorticella is also referred as bell animal cule and the largest species it is vorticella campanula uh, the bell usually this part this part uh, uh, it uh, like uh, uh, measures up to 157 microns in length and 99 microns in uh, width okay and uh, so the color usually it may be yellowish greenish or bluish and the smallest species it is vorticella microstoma okay um, as we have already seen the body is uh, formed of inverted bell shaped structure over here and a long stalk the bell shaped part is formed of uh, i mean what are the structures associated with that we can find uh, this one we have over here this is a part which we are going to discuss it is a peristome the margin of the broad free end this part is actually thickened and it is known as peristomial collar okay so this part is referred you can see over here it is referred so this is a peristomial collar okay or it is otherwise referred as uh, lip and inside the peristomial collar is a narrow shallow circular and marginal depression which is known as a peristome okay and uh, th that is actually the oral group the peristome or oral group it is uh, present inside the peristomial collar uh, the peristome it surrounds a broad slightly convex peristomial disc here you can see the peristomial disc okay so this peristome uh, the uh, peri you can see here the peristomial group okay this actually surrounds a central 
peristomial disc or it is otherwise known as the oral disc right and this uh, oral disc seems to close the opening of the be the bell shaped part okay you can see here so there is a uh, peristomial collar the peristomial groove or the oral groove over here it surrounds a peristomial disc and this peristomial disc it seems to close the uh, uh, like open part of the bell shaped structure over here okay now the peristomial disc is fused with the collar on one side uh, with the result of the peri with the, the as a result the peristome does not form a complete ring okay and the peristomial disc can be withdrawn uh, when the peristome contracts and covers it so this is how the this part works okay the next part we have is the vestibule you can see here the uh, this is the part and then the vestibule okay uh, between the peristome and the peristomial disc is a permanently open space uh, it is known as the vestibule over here okay or infundibulum and from the vestibule a narrow cytopharynx uh, you can see here the uh, cytopharynx okay so the vestibule uh, from the vestibule arises a very narrow cy cytopharynx uh, which lead inward okay into the body uh, the cytopharynx you can see here has no cilia unlike the paramecium which we have discussed it doesn't have any uh, cilia in along the uh, cytopharyngeal region uh, between the vestibule and the cytopharynx is a cytostome which can open or close so this is with regard to the vestibule now when we speak about the cilia cilia it is found on the surface which is known as the adoral cilia you can see here inner adoral cilia okay outer adoral cilia right so it, the uh, adoral uh, actually this uh, part actually do have cilia in a specific pattern the cilia is arranged in a specific pattern and uh, uh, the rest of the body you can see it doesn't have any cilia so cilia it is arranged in this particular specific fashion and that is uh, on the ador uh, it is referred as a doral wreath of cilia okay and uh, unlike paramecium the rest of the body doesn't have any uh, cilia arranged the peristomial group bears three concentric uh, rows of adoral cilia arranged into circlets the inner circlet has two row cir circles of cilia which are closely associated forming a double row here you can see the double rows okay one and two right and uh, uh, its cilia stand standing straight up and keep up constant undulation it keep on moving you can see here okay uh, since it is moving it's not so clearly visible okay so it keeps on uh, shows undulating movement right and the outer circlet is single uh, and this one this is the outer adoral cilia it is single and has short cilia as compared with the inner adoral cilia uh, these are inclined outwards it is slightly bent outwards uh, over the collar uh, and guide the foot into the vestibule and this is vestibule isn't it so uh, the beating of this one it will move water along with the foot particles towards the vestibule so that is a function of the outer adoral cilia and each uh, uh, circle of cilia forms more than a complete uh, ring which slightly overlaps okay so it is not tip, uh, it is a circle but it slightly overlaps and all cilia lie anti clockwise and they are fused at their bases with a free uh, distally so this is with respect to the cilia arranged over the peristomial region now when we speak about the pellicle the outer covering you can see uh, uh, just like paramecium here also they do have a pellicle covering the entire uh, body is covered by a pellicle which is ringed transversely by parallel striations okay and uh, uh, it is very thick at the base and uh, and uh, continued with the stalk this pellicle is continued with the stalk in the stalk as well okay uh, and uh, uh, in the stalk you can see the pellicle is covered by an external cuticular layer so that is with respect to the uh, outer covering now regarding the cytoplasm it is differentiated into ectoplasm and endoplasm you can see very clearly over here and ectoplasm it is modified to form myoneme systems you can see here myoneme systems these these striations like structures are known as myoneme system having longitudinal and oblique as well as uh, circular myonemes they are visible in the base of the uh, pell okay longitudinal myonemes help in shortening the body uh, oblique myonemes pull the disc this one peristomial disc downward and uh, uh, the circular myonemes contract the peristome and close it over the disc so uh, myonemes help in uh, movement of the whole body okay 